Sup, Shooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, I think you homies already know by now that virtually everybody, except for batshit crazy conspiracy theorists, accept the overwhelming evidence that dihydrotestosterone, also known as DHT, causes hair loss in individuals who are genetically susceptible to androgenic alopecia. It has become so overwhelmingly obvious that even the most extreme proponents of bizarre hair loss theories like the blue flu theory or the even worse or skull expansion theory have had to reluctantly incorporate the DHT factor into their ridiculous bogus theories. For example, the blood flu theory started out as just a theory that tense muscles or a tense gallia aponeurotica was cutting off the blood flu supply to the scalp and subsequently causing hair follicles to die from this lack of blood flu. The only problem with that theory was that finasteride, which lowers DHT but doesn't have anything to do with blood flow, was shown to be a very effective treatment for treating male pattern baldness. So therefore, the original blood flow theory then had to be modified to better explain this and the proponents of the theory came up with the lame explanation that low blood flow increased DHT levels and that this is why finasteride was working even though the supposed problem was low blood flow. Anyways, the whole theory is completely bogus and I've debunked it several times in many of my videos and I'll go ahead and link them below in case you're uh, not convinced. But anyways, I'm not here to litigate the whole blood flow theory but rather I'd like to go ahead and just express the point that pretty much everyone other than a few fringe health cult groups like the Ray Peat forms, for instance, accept the fact that DHT causes hair loss in people who have androgenic alopecia. But the question then comes up, if DHT can cause hair loss, what about testosterone? Can testosterone also cause hair loss? Well, the short answer to this is no. However, I have to say that I don't blame people for believing this. It's something I myself used to believe, and it's understandable why many people may establish a connection between testosterone and hair loss. After all, it is called androgenic alopecia. So wouldn't that imply that it could be caused by any androgen, including testosterone and not just DHT? Well, you'd think so, but we really shouldn't get too carried away by the terminology here. I haven't been able to discover who exactly coined the term androgenic alopecia or the irritating alternate name androgenetic alopecia, but both terms started appearing in the English literature in the 1960s, which you can see in this Google Ngram chart right here. And actually, the link between androgens and male pattern baldness has been known since at least the 1940s, long before DHT was discovered to be an androgen produced by the body from metabolism of testosterone by the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, aka the 5-AR enzyme. This was established in this paper published in 1942 by Dr. Hamilton from Yale University. And if that name sounds familiar, that is because he is the doctor who established the Hamilton Norwood scale, which is commonly used to track the progression of androgenic alopecia. In fact, Dr. Hamilton was the first person in the modern era to make a connection between sex hormones and baldness. Although if you go back much further than that, back to ancient Greece even, philosopher Socrates made note of the curious fact that eunuchs never went bald. Of course, back then they didn't have the tools to measure things like hormones. Dr. Hamilton, on the other hand, was able to investigate 104 men with testicular insufficiency, of which 44 were real castrated eunuchs. Anyways, Dr. Hamilton found that men lacking testosterone or who were castrated before puberty never developed hair loss, even though it occurred in other family members of theirs. He then made the remarkable observation that men with testicular insufficiency develop baldness after receiving male hormone injections. Finally, he noted that castration at an early age is a way to prevent baldness. But as he writes here, quote, the cure is worse than the disease, unquote. That's for damn sure. But anyways, Fortunately, we have much better cures available today than castration in the forms of things like finasteride and minoxidil, which effectively treat hair loss without compromising our virility. But it is kind of amazing that 80 years ago, the link between androgens and baldness had already been worked out, yet there are still people alive today who deny it remarkably enough. But anyways, in the 1940s, testosterone had already been discovered, but DHT had not been found to occur in the body. So these early investigators could be forgiven for believing that it was testosterone itself that was causing baldness. However, much later on, a few decades later on, by the 1970s, the metabolism of testosterone had been worked out and was found to be more complicated than originally thought. Testosterone could be converted into DHT via the 5-AR enzyme, but could also be converted into estrogen via the aromatase enzyme. It was a surprise to the researchers at the time that testosterone had active metabolites, and one of them, namely DHT, was an even more powerful androgen than testosterone itself. So... 
In the 1970s, researchers were interested in learning whether it was testosterone or DHT that was responsible for male pattern baldness. So, in 1974, investigators from the University of Texas looked at levels of sex hormones in the plucked hairs of balding and normal men and women. In these hairs, they found inactive metabolites of testosterone called 17 ketosteroids, but they also found DHT. Amazingly, even way back in 1974, it was found that in balding hairs, the levels of DHT were elevated compared with non-balding hairs, which is a result that has been confirmed in many more recent studies. In fact, DHT levels, 5-AR enzyme levels, and androgen receptor levels are increased in balding hairs as opposed to non-balding hairs. So even these early studies pointed at DHT rather than testosterone as being the culprit causing hair loss. Well, Coincidentally, also in 1974, there was a famous study that was published that identified several families living in the Dominican Republic who had very low DHT levels. The men in these families at birth appeared to be girls, in fact, but during puberty, they had normal masculinization of their sex organs. However, they had scanty or absent beards, small prostate glands, and most importantly, they had no hairline recession or hair loss whatsoever. These men were found to have very low serious DHT levels, but normal testosterone levels, and the reason was that they lacked the 5-AR enzyme. There are backdoor pathways to producing DHT outside of the 5-AR enzyme, and it was later found out that these, that these men just lacked the 5-AR type 2 isoenzyme, so none of their DHT levels were zero, but this study did show that when DHT levels are low enough, hair loss as caused by androgenic alopecia is no longer possible, even with normal testosterone levels. In fact, this situation in these men was very similar to what happens with finasteride, which blocks the 5-AR type 2 isoenzyme. And if testosterone itself caused hair loss, then these men would have had it. This is reassuring data that blocking the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme with finasteride should not ever worsen hair loss. So anyways, this study not only defines some of the different functions of DHT versus testosterone in the body, but it also clearly showed that DHT was the culprit in causing hair loss, not testosterone. Because because these men with 5-AR deficiency never developed hair loss despite having normal testosterone levels. It's also interesting that these men lacking DHT had normal muscle development at puberty, indicating that testosterone is the important male hormone for muscle development, not DHT. In fact, there was even an Olympic athlete named Castor Semenya who has 5-AR deficiency and so has very low levels of DHT but normal levels of testosterone for a male. One problem, though, is she identifies as a female, and given her high testosterone levels, she has been disqualified from future events because of these levels. Politics aside, though, the underlying point here is that DHT is obviously not necessary for athletic development. In fact, this study and further research indicated that testosterone and DHT have very different roles in the body. DHT, it is important for fetal sexual development as well as developing facial hair during puberty. However, as far as maturation of sex organs during puberty, as well as the deepening of the voice and muscle development goes, all you really need is testosterone. And that is why it is even common for teenagers to take finasteride and not experience any negative side effects. So after early adolescent development, all DHT seems to do is cause problems for the human organism. It causes bald acne, and prostate enlargement, and this is why I refer to DHT as a trash hormone, and I've done several videos on this subject, which I'll link below. An interesting study to further clarify the different roles of testosterone and DHT was published in 2012. This study enrolled healthy men between 18 and 50 years of age with normal testosterone levels. To suppress the participants' own natural testosterone production, the subjects all received different doses of injectable testosterone, ranging from 50 to 600 milligrams per week, as well as either a placebo or a dose of 2.5 milligrams per day of dutasteride. The researchers looked at fat-free mass, which is equivalent to looking at muscle mass, as well as muscle strength, sexual function, and prostate volumes. Anyways, the results showed that increasing doses of testosterone increased muscle mass and strength, and this was not affected at all by dutasteride. In other words, this again is more proof that DHT has no effect on muscle development or strength whatsoever. It is testosterone that is important for muscle strength, not DHT. People who claim that finasteride hurt their gains at the gym are probably just having a nocebo effect because they're listening to absolute idiots online who are lying to them about DHT being important when it really isn't. If anything, 
something, finasteride could be beneficial since it may actually increase testosterone levels. Although, to, although to be fair about that, uh, the jump in testosterone from a drug like finasteride or testosterone is likely too low to give you any kind of sports performance benefits. At the very least, though, it wouldn't hurt. The point here, though, in this study is that DHT suppression with dutasteride had no negative effect on muscle mass or strength or on sexual function, and that is because DHT is a trash hormone, and the good things people associate it with are actually attributable to testosterone and not DHT. The authors felt that DHT amplifies the effects of testosterone in tissues with high 5-AR activity, like the prostate or hair follicles. However, muscle and bone have very low 5-AR activity, and intra-tissue DHT levels are low within these tissues, so, so therefore, DHT is only active in tissues where it only does bad things, like cause hair loss, enlarge our prostate, and give us acne. Another interesting finding was that despite blocking DHT in the prostate with dutasteride, the prostate volume didn't change, indicating that in the absence of DHT, testosterone is enough to maintain prostate volume. All this indicates that after puberty, DHT really is a completely useless trash hormone. Of course, one of the best lines of evidence that it's DHT and not testosterone that causes hair loss is the fact that 5-AR blockers like finasteride and dutasteride can halt or reverse the progression of hair loss despite the fact that they can raise testosterone levels. Finasteride and dutasteride have no androgen blocking effects. They simply block the conversion of testosterone into DHT and thus lower DHT levels. At the same time, testosterone may rise a little bit because it isn't being converted into DHT. But some of this increase in testosterone may be blunted by conversion into estrogen via the aromatase pathway. If testosterone does increase a little with finasteride, it's clear that this doesn't have any negative effect on finasteride's effectiveness in treating hair loss. So it's pretty clear that DHT and testosterone have different roles in the body, but it's strange that they both achieve their different effects through the exact same androgen receptor, isn't it? So couldn't that mean that very elevated levels of testosterone could at least theoretically cause hair loss too? If both hormones act through the same receptor, then why not, right? Well, there is some research that the two androgens interact with the androgen receptor in different ways. First off, if you look at the chemical formulas of testosterone versus DHT, you can see they only differ in one spot. But that one minor difference is enough to change the affinity of the androgen receptor to DHT. So that DHT is twice as likely to bond to the androgen receptor versus DHT, and DHT is five times less likely to disassociate from the androgen receptor relative to testosterone. In this review of the androgen receptor published in 2015, these effects were felt to account for the fact that DHT effects are so different from testosterone effects. However, another study published in 2007 looked at whether testosterone and DHT actually change the function of the androgen receptor in different ways. There is a specific pocket in the androgen receptor molecule that both testosterone and DHT fit into. And once this interaction occurs, the androgen receptor moves into the cell nucleus and activates nuclear DNA to synthesize numerous proteins. It turns out that testosterone and DHT fit the pocket differently, kind of like two different size feet trying to fit into the same size shoe. When testosterone binds with the androgen receptor, it is a looser fit, and this affects the structure of the receptor, weakening it, making it more wobbly. So that is not as effective in activating DNA as when DHT binds with it, which is a tighter fit. These Tinker Toy-like diagrams depict this, but the chemistry is very complicated and difficult to explain. The important thing to understand, though, is that due to different binding capabilities and alterations of the androgen receptor by DHT versus testosterone, DHT causes much more potent androgenic effects than testosterone does. So in tissues where DHT is the dominant androgen, such as the hair follicles or the prostate, testosterone has minimal effects. So that is another reason not to worry that any increase in testosterone is going to worsen your hair loss. So long as you are on finasteride and suppressing your DHT, you have nothing to worry about when it comes to raising your testosterone levels. Of course, it's another story if you increase testosterone and you are not on a 5-AR blocker, because increasing testosterone can subsequently increase DHT, but it's the DHT and not the testosterone itself in this case that will make hair loss worse. And this effect can be totally blocked by 5-AR inhibitors. So even if someone has naturally really high levels or even super physiological levels of testosterone, they can still completely stop hair loss with finasteride. In fact, if you remember the study I referenced earlier, some of the subjects were using 600 milligrams of testosterone per week, which goes way beyond testosterone replacement therapy. That is the type of dose more associated with steroid use for bodybuilding as 
well as athletic performance. But even in that case, hair loss will not occur with the use of a 5-AR inhibitor. So you can have as much testosterone as you want. Just so long as you stop it from converting into DHT, you will not lose your hair. So after all this, if for some reason you're still afraid that finasteride will increase your testosterone levels and cause hair loss, then I invite you to check out one more study with me. And this one is from our good friend, Dr. Trash, who if you have been following my channel for a long time, you will recognize as a recurring character in the Hair Cafe Cinematic Universe, along with other such figures like Dr. Earwig and Dr. Truib, aka the Morton Solace of hair loss researchers. Now, I don't always see eye to eye with Dr. Trash because he publishes a lot of articles claiming post-finasteride syndrome is a real thing, when of course it isn't, but you know what they say about a broken clock, right? But anyways, in this case, we'll go ahead and take a look at a study he published in 2019 on whether or not finasteride really does increase testosterone levels. It turns out there are a number of studies on this topic, and most of these studies do show a minor increase in testosterone levels with finasteride use, but some studies don't show any increase at all. Well, in this trash study, Dr. Trash did a meta-analysis of 11 different studies that included 1,784 subjects, and this meta-analysis did not show a definite increase in testosterone levels in patients taking finasteride or dutasteride. Some studies showed increases in testosterone on finasteride and dutasteride when baseline levels of testosterone were low, but Dr. Trash hypothesizes that the low DHT levels from the drugs opened up more binding sites on serum hormone binding globulin, aka SHBG, and this caused more testosterone uptake by SHBG and increased total testosterone levels. So what Dr. Trash is saying here is that the increase in testosterone from 5 error blockers is just some kind of artifact. Well, I don't really know if I fully trust Dr. Trash here, especially since he included 11 articles in the meta-analysis, but then threw out 29 other articles from the analyses. In his other articles, he seems to have an agenda to make finasteride look bad, and I think he's probably even on the PFS Network's payroll, and I even made a video, which I'll link below, where I reviewed some of his more trashy research, but I'm not sure if that is the case here, at least. Anyways, I think the implication here is that any increase in testosterone on finasteride or dutasteride is very minor if it exists at all. So this is yet another reason not to worry about testosterone increases worsening hair loss if you take these 5-AR blocking drugs. So we can easily conclude from all this that testosterone on its own does not cause hair loss. High testosterone can be correlated with hair loss, but that is only if you are not stopping it from converting into DHT with a 5-AR inhibiting drug like finasteride. All the blame for hair loss falls on the trash hormone DHT, not testosterone. As long as you can lower DHT with a 5 air blocker or maybe block the androgen receptors in the scalp using a topical anti-androgen receptor blocker like Fluoridil or some newer androgen receptor blockers like Flascoterone or maybe Pirolutamide, then you shouldn't worry about normal or high testosterone levels worsening your hair loss. So I made this video because oftentimes I hear people say they started dutasteride or finasteride and it made their hairline worse somehow and then they speculate it must have been because of the increase in testosterone levels. This isn't possible and what is much more likely happening is that they're misinterpreting a shed as a sign the drug isn't working. And if you haven't seen my video about shedding, make sure you watch it. I'll link it below. Another possibility is they're buying expired or counterfeit drugs from the gray market rather than getting a prescription, and these drugs may not work. Or it could be possible that their hair loss is so aggressive that even a standard dose of dutasteride will not work, in which case the drug can be safely titrated up to 2.5 milligrams per day, which should treat hair loss under virtually any circumstance. Scalp hair follicles in people genetically susceptible to androgenic alopecia are saturated in DHT, and this DHT strongly activates androgen receptors and sets off cascades of reaction that include suppressing the WNT wind pathway, affecting positive and negative growth factors, affecting prostaglandin levels, and all other sorts of harmful events that lead to shortened antigen growth phases, miniaturization of hair follicles, and eventual replacement of hair follicles by scar tissue, in which case it's game over. This is something only DHT. DHT can do. Testosterone can only sit there and watch the spectacular damage its uglier, eviler cousin DHT is wrecking on your hair. So put the blame where it belongs and take a silver sword to that ridiculous trash hormone DHT and kill it before it turns you into a bald cell slaphead for life. And with that, thank you for watching my fellow hair loss witchers. I will see you all next time. Good luck on the path. Take care.